Hi, this is Mark from LongNightWatch.com. Welcome to another episode of Watch and Learn. If you follow me on Instagram, if you don't, please follow me. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen a photo of a, uh, a chronograph movement, mechanical chronograph movement with a swan's neck regulator recently. Uh, and that is the topic of today's Watch and Learn. I'm going to show you what the swan's neck regulator is and how it works. Uh, my own wrist check. My Zin 757 UTC Chrono from uh, that Damasco and Zin video. And another one that was on Instagram, a throwback Orient 100 meter diver. Uh, comment if you remember this watch. Uh, it came in three varieties, uh, blue, black, and a, a two-tone. When it came out, it was like 100 bucks. Amazing. Um, still works, never been serviced. So the, the watch is at least a decade old. Anyway, uh, let's, um, let's learn about swan neck regulators. Okay, so what is a swan's neck regulator, swan neck regulator, whatever you want to call it. It's a fancy name. And how does it work? So I have two, uh, two not identical movements, but I have two Siegel ST19 movements here, mechanical chronographs. Uh, the one on the right has the swan's neck, and it's running. The one on the, one on the left is uh, infamous uh, parts bin stuff. Uh, but I just want to show you that they are basically the same movement, save for one minor detail. So I am going to look at the moment out it first. So here is the balance, okay? Um, could probably energize it just by, yeah, I can energize it by holding it. There you go, and it'll run. And as you've seen me do in other videos, uh, to regulate or adjust the watch, sorry, I lost focus there. To regulate or adjust the watch, you move this stud up and down, corresponding to the directions engraved on the balance cock here, plus and minus, minus being slower, plus being faster. Uh, you move this in small increments, and somewhere over here is a little notch. I really, I can't see it. Uh, that shows you where it's set. This is the one we never touch on, on Wallace. You know what you're doing. This is um, uh, for the adjustment of uh, beat error. Uh, so you move this up and down. You gotta be careful. There's a very delicate spring below this. The challenge here is that moving this lever, whether you do it with a toothpick, a screwdriver, whatever, is very small increments of moving it. Uh, I won't, let's see, could we move it? I, don't, I have no depth perception right now. There we go. See, very small increments can make the movement vary widely in accuracy. So, there is a... Ready? So, watch that same area on the other movement. Ready? So, same movement. Now, if we look at the balance cock, we have a swan's neck. Okay? So, just like... I'm trying to get as close as possible, but without losing as much field of view. So there they are side by side. So you can see it's basically the same movement. All they've done is over here on the left, tapped a couple of holes, and then inserted the swan's neck uh, piece and extended on the, uh, the, the adjustment lever a little notch that comes out here. So let's move on to here. The finishing you see on the movement, don't worry about it. It has nothing to do uh, with what, what we're talking about. So, so now here, again, I'm trying to look. I don't want to kill the movement. There it is. So here is that, that stud that we talked about before that you want to move up and down. And that will do go from minus to plus, make it slower and faster. What they've done is they've extended it to have a little a post here. And then they fastened this swan's neck, which is basically a spring. Okay, it's pushing against this. And then on this side, there is a fastener. And that fastener is tapped through this brass piece, and it's resting on this post here. So if I were to, let me see if I can pull it up. I don't know if I can get it. I'm not gonna be able to get any closer. And I hate using the microscope. So we'll leave it there. Uh, so if I were to put the screw driver in here, I did this before, guys, with a loop, and my face has to be literally right in it, so I'm not going to do it now. Uh, but there is a cut. It's easier to do in the movements out of the watch, but you can get the screw, the screwdriver into the screw or this stud, and if you turned it clockwise, what's going to happen? Well, the screw is going to go through this tap here, and it's going to push on this stud, and it's going to slow the movement down. And if you turn this screw counterclockwise, it's going to go this way, right? And what's going to happen? Well, this swan's neck is like a spring. It's going to press 
this stud and it's going to come closer to the positive side. So you say, great, well, it's doing the same thing as the one you showed me before, it's just doing it with a screw. And you would be perfectly correct, except it's a screw. So it's acting like a jack. So large motions of my wrist, say, or of my fingers, one full rotation is a very small amount when you translate that into screw threads. I do not know how many threads per inch this screw is, uh, but it's probably at least 80 to 100 threads per inch, I'm guessing. So uh, every turn of the screw, every full rotation would be 10 thousandths of an inch. If I think I'm doing the math correct in my head. Uh, and that's a, that's a large adjustment, one full turn of the screwdriver, you know, it's 360 degrees, and, but we're only moving it 10 thousandths of an inch, roughly, you know, the thickness of, say, five sheets of paper. You know, so half a turn is five mils, which is, you know, crazy. We're talking about, you know, small increments with large movements, which is great. Uh, and that's basically it. So that's how the Swan's Neck Regulator works. It basically acts to take, uh, it uses kind of a, almost a mechanical advantage. Uh, you are taking large mechanical motion, rotating a screw, and turning it into, into small adjustments of a beat lever. Uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com with Watch and Learn showing you the Swan's Neck Regulator. Please like the video if you enjoy it. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Please follow me on Instagram if you haven't. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below, and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.